Here we got our 10 minutes of recovery. This is gonna be done in a doorway. Uh, everybody has different sizes, uh, different size doorways, right? So uh, any depth is fine, but what we're gonna start on here today, opening the palms up, just opening the chest up, developing the back chain strength, elongating the neck and pulling the head and the spine up through the shoulders. So a couple tips here. We wanna work on feet nice and straight forward. We're gonna gently pull the knees open. We're gonna check our feet to make sure that they're as balanced as we can make them. And we are gonna frequently throughout this movement, uh, throughout this series, just check the feet. We're also gonna work on some heel raises and some calf raises here. Uh, but part of our focus is gonna be in the upper body and part of our focus is gonna be in the lower body. First little key point, we wanna get the hands pressed out into the door frame nice and wide. And we can just gradually begin this movement with a nice little neck stretch over to the left and then over to the right side, holding for anywhere from like 10 to 20 seconds, keeping the feet nice and balanced, pulling the head away from the left hand, pushing the fingers of the left hand and the hand, the palm of the left hand into the doorway, and then pushing the right hand into the doorway, straightening the elbow, letting the neck pull away from this arm. This is a incredible movement. This is an incredible movement for carpal tunnel, for neck pain, for neck tension, for shoulder tension. It's a great exercise to become more back chain dominant. We wanna think about pressing the palms out into the doorway, flattening the hands, pulling the head away from the opposite side arm, and then over to the opposite side. So heads over to the left, straighten and press the right arm and pull that head as far away as you can. After you do that for a few seconds, 10, 20, 30 seconds, push both hands, lift the head up as high as you can and reset over to the left and then over to the right. Reach your jaw forward. Kind of pull that head right away from the shoulder. Come back to center, roll the shoulders open, lean the head over to the right, and then over to the left. Good, come back to center. Slide the hands up on the doorway, raise your heels up nice and high, and let's work on developing that foot and ankle strength down into the lower body. Kind of pressing the toes down into the ground and adding in a little bit of a left shoulder roll down and back, and then a right shoulder roll down and back. Straightening the elbow, trying to get a nice big twist through the right shoulder blade backwards, and then the left shoulder blade backwards. As the left shoulder rolls open, we're gonna think about turning the right shoulder in and kind of pumping the pelvis through over to the left, and then the right shoulder is gonna lock in into the drop-in position. The left shoulder is gonna release. We're gonna to try to twist this left shoulder in pull the head away from the left side, and then pull the head away from the right side, lean the head over. Come back to center, focus on your feet for a few seconds, raising the heels up, twisting the knees open, straightening the knees out, standing up nice and tall through the feet, gently gripping the toes down to the ground. Come back up into the upper body, focus on a little shoulder roll right, and a little shoulder roll left, letting the hips rotate over to my drop-in side. That's gonna be my right side. My right elbow is gonna roll in. My right elbow is gonna straighten and tuck in. And then over to the left side, left elbow tucks in. Add in the next stretch. Add in the next stretch. Come back to center. You can put the feet down, reach the hands down big time. Twist the hips now over to the left, gently gripping down through the toes. Do not let this ankle collapse. So keep pressure out on the outside of your back foot. You're using your right glute to push your hips over to the right and then left glute to push the hips over to the left. Stand up tall out of the knees, reach the head away, twist over to the left, reach the head away from the right and tie in all four quadrants. So if I'm over to the left, the left elbow's in, the right shoulder's away, the right glute pushes as the left foot pulls that leg back, straighten everything out nice and tall. This is what's gonna help us to save the ACL 
and the medial meniscus from knee injury as we learn how to rotate the hips through this position, gently gripping down into the ground with the toes, twisting over to the left, leaning and pulling the head away from the right side, twisting over to the right, leaning and pulling away from the left side. After you get a nice little shoulder fry right here, you'll feel how that opens your chest up and how that really stretches the biceps out. We can come up into a mid position, putting the palms out on the outside of the, or the inside of the doorway and just lifting the head up, trying to drive the elbows down nice and low, trying not to arch the low back too much, but keep a slight uh, pelvic tilt so that you are just a little bit of forward movement up onto the toes. Lean the head over to the left and then lean the head over to the right. Find those green dots, those little outside pressure points on the outside of the feet. Raise the heels up a little higher and then we can add a little slide left and a little slide right into the doorway. Over to the left side, left elbow tucks in, head raises and stretches. And then over to the right side, right elbow in, head reaches over to that right side, back to center. If you've got a decent amount of shoulder movement, you can lower the hands down a little bit here. But if you need to keep the arms up, that's fine right here. Get comfortable pressing into your doorway very gently through the palms and just kind of resting the shoulders open, leaning the chest and the pelvis through, being mindful that you're keeping a little bit of external rotation down in the feet and that you're not collapsing inward. So maintain that external rotation, that double bow set position down in the feet. Work on your pelvic movement, dropping in over on the right leg, pressing through with the left, and then dropping in over on the left leg, pressing through on the right green dot. Right rotate with the hips, left rotate with the hips. As the shoulders fatigue, you can lower them back down here, or we can even transition into a little bit more of an upper or an overhead position right here. The doorway is great because it helps you to develop symmetry and balance through your movements. We can work on shoulder mobility, scapular mobility, and muscle control throughout both these movements. Think about straightening the elbows, slide over to the right side, straighten, release the left, slide over to the left, drop in, and release the right side, straighten that right elbow. Leaning away from that back arm, and then away from this back arm right here leaning the head over to the column. Again, checking the feet so that you've got nice foot pressure. Twist the hips through over to the right side now. And then over to the left side. Press up through that left green dot. This is my left drop inside. This is my right release side. Make sure that this ankle on the right foot also stays slightly up and elevated out to that green dot pressure. Back over to the right side. Make sure that the left foot still has that green dot pressure. Find that left glute. Press through on the left. Press through on the right. Come back to center. Stand up tall. Raise the arms up. You might be able to touch the top of the door frame. Keep the hands nice and flat. Roll around on the feet. Find your calf muscles. Balance out the bones in your feet. The little metatarsal heads. You may have some pain in the bottom of the feet, uh, some muscle tension, maybe a little neuritis, a little nerve inflammation. Find that outside portion of the foot, drive through and drive through. As the arms fatigue in the overhead position, reset down into the bottom. Take a baby step forward, hinge forward at the hips, pick the head up. So now we're in our hinge with our external rotation. Be mindful, look down at your feet, Gently straighten your knees out. And now we can work on that same shoulder mobility in that door frame and finding your tight areas through your spine, through your elbows, through your shoulders. Drop in on the right, drop in on the left, drop in on the right, release on the left, pull the head away. Drop in on the left, release the right, pull the head away. Lift the head up. Stretch the jaw gently and pull all that tension out of the front of your neck. Be mindful of your diaphragmatic breathing. The more air that you put down into your abdomen, the more you'll feel your neck will stretch out. Last little key point here, we're gonna add a little hip swivel. So we're gonna rotate the hips over to the left, 
focusing on dropping in on the left side, releasing through the right shoulder. And then over here on the right, sliding and rotating the hips so that they point over to the right side, here to here. And this is gonna be big time to help balance out the back chain and develop that beautiful hip corner or that rotation through the hips. Come back up to center when you need your rest. Try to maintain the hands out on the out of the door uh, on the inside of the doorway, and again, just refocus on the next stretch left and the next stretch right. Transition back into your hip hinge. Observe the knees. Gently twist the knees open. Hinge down into it. Pump the shoulders left and right, so you can get that maximum back chain. Bend down into it. Stand up, next stretch left, and next stretch right. There's your doorway recovery. All right, so we got a recovery workout for about 15 minutes. We wanna hear, we're gonna work on a low bar hang. Now, if you have your pull-up bar at home and it's a high bar, no worries. We're gonna start with a nice little dead weight hang stretch. I'm gonna show you the majority of this on the low bar though. Uh, for anybody that has a low bar, but again, no issues if you have the high bar. We're going to start down in our uh, bent leg feet straight position. And guys, what we want to work on here is getting that green dot front pad pressure through the front of the feet and gently just start rocking forward and backward, trying to raise the heels up gently and just kind of slide. And we're just hanging right down through the arms and we're going to slide forward to backward. And then also just side to side through the pads of the feet, nice and easy. You can hold one side for as, as long as you want, five or 10 seconds, wherever you feel weakness at in your shoulders. Be mindful of your grip, be mindful of your finger strength through here. We wanna keep our feet in that narrow column stance. We wanna work on driving pressure through the front of the feet. And we can work right through here. It's just a nice little rock backward and forward kind of grinding out and developing the symmetry in the, in the joint movement through the feet, through the ankles, and up into the knees. Now at any point you need to stand up, you can stand up and then we're gonna change our focus into our toes, right? So for here, we've got leg focus, we've got shoulder focus, we're working on sliding left, sliding right, developing strength through the core, strength through the shoulder blades, Strength through the feet gently, drive the hips back when you need to pull up. One of the things uh, that I've included over the past two years that's made massive change in my own body, and you've seen this in one of the other uh, recode videos, is the toe flexibility. And we want to work on developing that uh, toe flexion and ankle flexion down into uh, down into the bottom of the foot. So when the shoulders fatigue in this movement. We can work on standing up. And again, whether you're in the overhead position or the low bar position, just have the hands rest on the bar. Start to just roll around on your feet. This is something that will be a little painful at first for many of you. Uh, you'll have a lot of tension in the tendons and the ligaments of the ankle. Many of us have old ankle sprains uh, from childhood or even teenage years, especially if you were an athlete and you ever rolled your ankle or sprained your ankle, you will have old scar tissue or connective tissue fibrosis that you need to work out to develop uh, better knees, better hips, and better spine. So we can spend an undisclosed amount of time, whether it's 30 seconds or a minute, just kind of rolling around on the toes, applying a little bit of pressure down through the leg, through the big toe, and then rolling out to the outside of the foot, letting that knee just kind of cave in a little bit, pressing the top of the foot down in, letting the body, uh, feeling that movement, that fluid movement, right through the ankle as the knee wants to point in and back up to the big toe to the knee open drop in position. You can use your other foot for a little bit of balance and symmetry right through here and just gradually work at sitting down on top of the foot in different positions. So if we wanna get on the big toe on the right foot right here, we're gonna apply a little pressure straight through the big foot. We can work on some pelvic rocking right here Left knee forward, right knee forward, left knee forward, right knee forward. 
We can work on rolling down onto the distal portion of the toe, getting a nice big uh, stretch factor through the top of that ankle, ultimately straightening out this knee and rolling around from the little toes over to the big toe, focusing gradually on applying a little pressure down through the right foot and down through the right toes. We're gonna switch over to the left foot and we're gonna start off very slowly, very light pressure through the toes, rolling out. You may get your knuckles to adjust and crack uh, or pop or cavitate, that's a good thing. You do wanna increase this flexibility down in the toe joints. Gradually sink down into it and just start to work and as you do this, you'll feel the gradual improvement in the toe extension or the toe flexion, excuse me. As well as the knee, you'll feel the knee loosen up. Inhale back, exhale into it. Kind of grind out that hip corner right here on this right foot. And we're really stretching down here into the left foot. Sink down into it a little bit. Bounce it, hip pull, hip pull. Develop the bows and the corners into the hips and the fluid movement down into the legs. Gradually stand up, straighten this knee back as best you can. Roll down onto the tips of the toes. If you see that that little pinky toe is coming up, pop it back under, flex that foot down and gain that flexibility down on the toes. Press down through the left foot and rock over into your right leg bow set. Left knee in, left heel release. Drive a little pressure down through the top of the foot. Gradually apply a little more pressure, straighten the leg out and stretch all that connective tissue down through your knee. And you are activating your calf big time. You're getting a big back chain activation, which is eventually gonna turn into more hamstring and more glute power. All right, so slide left, slide right, transition back into your shoulders now that your hands and arms are recharged. Set your feet nice and straight. Roll forward through your toes. Add a little slide left, a little slide right. Or we can sit straight forward and gently rock through the toes, dropping the knees down low. Inhale back, exhale forward. Inhale back. Exhale forward, reach those knees down low, press the hips up through, inhale back, exhale forward. You're gonna spend time in these positions. You're gonna develop that pelvic and foot flexibility and strength. If you need to take a break, sit down onto the tops of the toes, drive the heels up. Being mindful of the knee position and that one knee's not higher than the other knee. So we do want to find that symmetry through the legs, which is going to help us to balance out all the muscles and the connective tissue down the legs. If you need to take a break, reset, come back down, change your foot position, work on your front to back rocking here. Inhaling forward, exhaling backward, keeping the head up nice and high, back into your shoulder shifts, left and right. Really push that right arm through, lift the head up high, push the left arm through. Come back to center. Back onto the toes here. Let's do a little bit of work in the overhead position here. Grind out the big toe, apply a little pressure on the proximal or the close toe joint and then gently roll around out to the little toes here. Drive the heel down, straighten the knee out, and you'll feel how that wants you to, uh, your body will want to kind of raise up the hip over into that drop-in position on the right. Toes down, heel up, straighten the knee, load the leg side to side here. If you just want to work on the low bar, you can just again add in your shifts. We're working on developing this beautiful Inside ankle bone high, this complements a goda. Getting the foot nice and strong. Uh, keeping the blueprint for back chain dominance in our brain and shifting from the left side over to the right side. Changing the toe position here. 
maintaining the green dot pressure on my stable leg, gradually working to add in that lateral shift side to side or knee straight with the drop in over to the left. Now my left big toe is a little tighter than my right big toe. So I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on this left foot, just kind of driving through uh, this left, left hip over to my right drop in, gently straightening the knee out, letting the hip hike way up into the body and kind of hanging right here. As you guys get comfortable with this in the overhead position, we're gonna work on the double toe drag. We're gonna tuck both toes under and where I like to start right here is again, use your hands to bear your weight, to hold most of your weight. As you feel comfortable, as your toes get stronger, side to side, you can gradually take a hand off. If you have a bar, transition down into a low squat, hip pull, stand back up, reach back up, bear the weight, a little bit of weight through the hands. As you get more comfortable, as your toes get more comfortable here, you're gonna be able to develop nice, easy strength through the legs, flexibility in the knees, flexibility in the hips, movement up in the shoulders. When your body tells you, hey, that's enough, take a break, focus back on one foot. We can drop into it here, play around with the toe position, roll around on this ankle, sink down into it, pull back away from it, sink down into it, pull back away from it, inhale forward, exhale backward. And then we're gonna go on that left foot, we'll work through the same movements, inhale forward, exhale backward, inhale forward, exhale backward, sink down into it gently. Be mindful of your toes. Be mindful of the pressure through the toes. If you feel that one toe is a little stickier than uh, some of the other ones, kind of hone in on it, press down through the leg, get that connective tissue down in the ankle to stretch out, gently roll the heel out and just work through the pain and the tension down in the feet. This is gonna help you develop mega strong ankles, mega strong toes and avoid any kind of non-contact foot injury, as well as uh, keep your feet, your ankles, your knees, your hips nice and healthy for life. All right, so a little bit of toe work. When the toes get fatigued, transition back down into your shoulder hang. We're going through about 15 minutes here. We can drive back, double bow set, point the toes in, pull the knees open, pull back through the right hip, Pull back through the left hip. Right hip. Left hip. Drop into your double bow set. Slide right, slide left. Over to the left, over to the right. Slide through. Drop the knees down. Lay the head back. And let the heels fall out. Raise, you can raise left heel or right heel right here, or we can just roll the toes big out into the double release position. When the shoulders fatigue, come back up, transition back up onto your toes. Rotate or corner through the hips, twisting left, and gently right. Standing up nice and tall, observing the feet. Straightening the knees nice and strongly. And again, if both feet are too difficult, just work on the one foot. You can reach the foot back, rock forward and backward up on the toes here. And when you attack your toes like this, it will make your whole body move better. Gotta attack the toes, twist into it, Push the hips back, 
Bounce up and down, maintain pressure in the left drop in. Now transition into your right release on the top of the foot. Sink into it. Roll around on the foot, find any tight tender areas. Transition over to the other foot, step it back. Drop down into it a little bit. Push the top of the left foot down into the ground. Let that heel fall out and straighten that knee back. And guys, what, uh, what we're doing here, we're transitioning through the upper body focus and the lower body focus so that you don't fatigue too much in one area and keep your body moving in different places. Slide left, slide right, slide backward. Double bow set, knees open gently. Get the feet to match. Very important to get the feet to match. You can work on picking the toes up. Drive the left hip or the right hip back. Drive the left hip back. Plant the toes back down. Focus on a little more toe pressure. When you need to transition back into your forward, you can sit down on your toes ultimately so that you're hanging very lightly through the hands. You can let the heels fall out. Observe the knee position and work on developing the symmetry through the legs and the stretch, big time stretch through the toes. Come back into center, sit in your squat, come back up overhead, transition back into your toes if you want to. The most difficult position that you guys are gonna work on here in the recovery is gonna be that double toe under, straighten the legs out. Ultimately, we want no pressure or very light pressure through the hands so that we develop the flexibility and the strength down into the feet, the toes, the knees, and all the other body parts that we keep talking about. Down into your squat. There you go.